Here in Cork County Council's Water Quality Laboratory, we test drinking water samples from across the county on a constant basis to make sure that the water you're drinking is safe. One of the things that we test for is the level of metals that's in water. Metals like iron, manganese, copper. And the way we test it is using an instrument called an ICPOES, inductively coupled plasma observed emission spectrum. And we just call it the ICP. So inductively coupled plasma is just an energy source that we use to make the metals that are in the water flash a distinctive color. We observe that color and how bright the color is and that tells us how much metal is in the water. Another time that we see flashing colors is fireworks and it's actually metals that we use in fireworks to give it different colors. And the different metals we use are sodium for yellow, aluminium for white, calcium for orange, barium for green, copper and strontium for purple. Now that you know some of the colours and judging by how bright things are, maybe you could tell what metals are in fireworks and how much. But obviously we can't have an explosion going off in the middle of a precision instrument in a laboratory. We need to energise the metal to glow and give off a flash somehow. Well, there's nothing more energetic and hotter in the universe than plasma. You've probably been told in school that there's three states of matter, solid, liquid and gas. And each one of those has a higher heat energy inside of it. If water gets cold, it turns solid. If water gets hot, it turns into a gas. But there's a fourth state called plasma. When a gas becomes superheated and has so much energy inside it, electrons start to be ripped off atoms. So now you've got positively charged atoms, negatively charged electrons. And that means that they can be influenced by an electromagnetic field. These plasmas contain vast amounts of energy and anything they come in contact with can themselves be vaporised and turned into a plasma. This amazing image is supplied courtesy of Sean Doran who's reprocessed data from NASA's Solar Dynamics Observatory. What you're seeing erupting from the surface of the Sun are loops of plasma that are trapped in magnetic fields, just like the field lines around a magnet. This shows how electrically charged plasma can be trapped in an electromagnetic field and contained. If we can generate a plasma and contain it in an electromagnetic field and introduce the metal we want to test to the plasma, that huge energy will be transferred to the metal and make it flash a distinctive colour. With the more metal that's present, the brighter the flash will be. We actually generate plasmas all the time without realising it. Every time you flick a light switch, that tiny little blue flash you might see, that's plasma. Or lightning, that's electricity flowing through charged air that's so hot it's glowing blue. Plasmas can sometimes as well be generated in a microwave by accident. That really loud crackling noise that you hear, that's plasma being generated. Don't try this at home because it can cause damage to a microwave. Here's footage from a microwave that's actually malfunctioning and generating plasma by accident. You can see that once the little ball of plasma gets started, that the microwaves put more and more energy into the ball of plasma and it gets bigger and hotter and rises up. In the laboratory, we use an argon gas to generate a plasma. Argon is a good gas to use because it's inert and won't react with any other substances. We use a very high voltage spark that sets off a plasma inside in the argon. The plasma is contained inside an electromagnetic field and then more energy is put into the plasma by radio frequencies that are generated inside in the instrument. The flame inside in the plasma is as hot as the surface of the sun. It's 10,000 degrees Celsius. The water that we want to test we turn into a very fine mist in a device called a nebulizer. The very fine mist is then brought up and introduced into the plasma flame. In a fraction of a second, dries out the metal, turns it from a solid to a liquid to a gas and then a plasma that emits a distinctive flash of light. Now this flash of light is not actually in the visible light spectrum. We couldn't see it with our eyes. It's in the ultraviolet light spectrum.
So the ICP has special detectors that detect the wavelength of the light and the intensity of the light. So in other words, what color is the light and how bright is that light? The ICP then gives the results of each distinctive wavelength detected, which is different for each metal. It also gives how bright or the intensity of the flash was, and that lets us know what the concentration was, and we can tell that it's below the required limit for the drinking water to be safe. We actually have to train the ICP how to identify which metals from which frequencies by using standards and repeating runs again and again until we get 99.99% accuracy. And only once the machine is validated and we're sure it's working do we use it to test and issue results for your drinking water. So that's how we test your water for metals using plasma as hot as the sun.